everybody welcome back to my channel you guys requested it and we are doing a resume live review today we have three resumes everybody is coming from different industries but they all are going towards a salesforce or a tech career so for today we have holly amber and john and we would like to especially thank them to um really let us review their resume but as you can see for a guest we do have jared back here again that is from audience request so we're so happy to have you. And since it is the holidays, we are doing a holiday special. We do have our special Christmas sweaters on. I have a little <laughs> and Jared, I would love for you to kind of show off your new ugly Christmas Absolutely. sweater. Absolutely. And we can now see Bob Ross in the flesh. <laughs> Back at it again. Hold on. Let me see if I can figure out this. There we go. Woo! We have different settings. This is a Spencer's classic. <laughs> oh cool that's so cool so everybody we were feeling super super festive and we really just wanted to bring the giving spirit for everybody here so let's just go ahead and really get right into it so holly we are going to be reviewing your resume again thank you so much for letting us do this um i would love to have jared just kind of speak to it first and then i'll follow up with him absolutely do we have a uh, little background about holly uh, maybe an understanding of what she's offering, what she's doing, what her next steps and goals are going to be. Yeah, absolutely. So Holly and I spoke a little bit offline and she is entering into the Salesforce industry. Um, she does have a tech background from before. So she really wants to be able to format her tech background um, and the skills that she already has, whether that be programming, SQL, um, a little bit of those areas to be able to put that towards more of a Salesforce career. So her goal ultimately is to be able to have um, a more of a junior role coming into Salesforce. Phenomenal, absolutely. And I do see some of those uh, those key skills and those uh, those core attributes that really do make a very successful developer. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, let's get into it. So if you can do me a favor, can you scroll yeah. just a little bit so I can see the rest of her resume? Absolutely. Nice. Okay, how many pages is it? Okay, okay, so it's it's actually one page, but the second page kind of came and tagged along for fun. Um, so the first thing I'm noticing is that one I do have to say that I, I do like the way that the sections are broken up. So I can say that that's that is very uh, professional and also it can be considered a design choice. So I think that that's something that you know kind of shows a little bit about uh, who Holly is and how she likes to um, organize herself. Uh, I can really kind of come out and seep out the the type of person or the type of professional that you would be dealing with um, when you're when you're looking at resumes. Uh, but what I do notice is that her key skills flow right into her education and her school projects, which I think um, can actually go to the bottom. So if we were to move those education and those school projects to where it historically is placed in most cases, which is under the work experience, I think that this actually might bring this resume a little further. Um, but I do like the way that uh, it is structured. And I do like the fact that she does use bullet points to convey the message. And she keeps those bullet points relatively short also by getting the point across, okay? And another thing I'm noticing too is that there's a little bit of off spacing within these key skills bullet points. While they are eye-catching, she may want, I wonder if there's a hierarchy or a reason behind the, the columns here, right? So we have, mm -hmm. Okay, no, I do see the hierarchy. So if you look at it, right, everything on the bottom kind of lines up with that last bullet point uh, in the left column all the way on the left side. So if you look at that, all of the bullet points that she has, they do transition across to make that fluid uh, effect. But at the same time, she may be able to conserve on space with that a little bit if she was to either bring some of these together and move some of them apart, right? So if she was able to If she was able to kind of transition this into either kind of considering the number of bullet points in each column and allowing it to kind of be that balanced bullet point look, right? Because there's enough bullet points in here that you can make both columns equal, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. right? If you were to move that Google certified over to the right, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. she may have, but it, it may also throw off alignment. But I do think that realistically that the bullet point, the numbers of bullet points that go across is actually going to be a little bit more organized to look at when you're looking at it, right? Because now you have an offset number. So you mm -hmm. have four on this side, you have you have five, yeah, five on this side, and then three on this side. Mm -hmm. So it varies. 
which is still, if you're looking at it from as, as a first glance, it's very professional looking. She looks extremely experienced. Can I see her experience section? Yep, absolutely. Here we go. Okay, so there's not a great deal of information in these work experience. So I think what she might want to do is she might want to actually add a little bit more content in there and try to see if she can condense some of these bullet points in her education and in her school projects. Kind of bring those together. She actually could probably combine those into education and school projects and then be able to differentiate them uh, accordingly. Mm -hmm. And from there, it, if she kind of expands on this, she'll probably be able to kind of convey the message of what she won what she did without having to ask too many questions about it and then when they actually do have a resume uh, i'm sorry an interview it'll actually flow a lot deeper than surface level because she's already gotten a lot of that information out but at the same time if she condenses that section it'll actually award her a little bit more room to actually make yeah more of mm -hmm. that work experience and make that kind of go a little further. And as we learned from um, previous conversations, I believe when you were interviewing with Tracy, mm -hmm. um, something that came to mind that I'm saying this now that I've read it on, on LinkedIn <laughs> a couple of times, but you know, it, it, it said that some of the best Salesforce admins do come from uh, extra, I'm sorry, uh, come from educational backgrounds. Yeah. So, you know, that, that looks awesome when you say it like that, right? And then you can kind of add a little bit of flair in there as well uh, maybe a little color pop to some of these sections if you really wanted to get a little bit artsy um, and kind of show a little bit more about who you are as opposed to how structured you are mm -hmm. and i think overall this is a very eye-catching uh very simple yet very organized resume and it can just use a little bit of restructuring and maybe a little bit of consolidation to really get those points across and a little bit of more in-depth um, the work experience, because my first thing or my first question when I'm looking at this work experience is, okay, cool. So, you know, I, I need a little bit more context. You said you designed, implemented effective standards-based lessons in writing and social studies. Can you go a little bit in depth in there? What else was that look like? What were your day-to-day -day responsibilities? How can we make this section work for us more so that there's less questions later? Great. Perfect. That is, that is great. Um, Holly, we really liked your resume in general. Um, so just for some background, Jared is going to talk into the actual formatting, how it looks for a recruiter, and then the elaborations of your prior experience. And then what I'm going to be touching on is how to make it more visible in a Salesforce perspective. Um, so now that you make these additions that Jared had mentioned, now we want to be able to really bring the Salesforce more out there for your resume. Um, so I will go from the beginning all the way to the end. So Holly, <laughs> again, thank you. I love that you have a programming background, I think, and I actually believe that these skills really do play into really any industry. So it's great that you have the key skills on the top. Um, but even before we get to the key skills, something that I just noticed was that under your name, you have only your email and your phone number, which is great. But now because we entered the Salesforce industry, you also wanna make sure that you're putting in your LinkedIn URL attached to it. That I don't mean like put the URL, I just mean just attach it, link it. So if a recruiter or somebody goes there, they can just click on it. And then I would also add in your Trailblazer account. Now, again, <laughs> hopping back to the key skill section, um, definitely what Jared said, you have five bullet points in the middle, four and three. Just rearrange them, make sure they're in order, four, four, four. Um, and then now I would actually suggest moving your education all the way down to the bottom. Um, and I'm saying this because a recruiter will still look to see if you have your education completed, but now that you're in a Salesforce tech position, the first things that they're looking for typically are that you're Salesforce certified. So make sure that you're adding in any certifications that you have, any super badges, um, especially when you're starting, you want to make sure that you're adding perhaps that you're a ranger, two times ranger, three times super badge. As you keep going, make sure that you put this in there. Now, moving down to your school projects and work experience, I completely agree with Jared. Um, looking here, you only have one bullet point. I would love to know what you did as a teacher because just like Tracy's video, and I'll make sure to link it right here. Um, 
teachers bring just so much to in the industry. You got everybody has a great way of communication and talking. We really want to be able to showcase that in your resume. So again, just make sure you're adding in maybe two or three bullet points. Elaborate a little bit, but a little bit more. Um, and when it comes to Salesforce, make sure or try to as best as you can put that into Salesforce words. So by looking at the Salesforce admin page, if that's a path that you're wanting to go or developer, I created reports to be able to track my child's or school's education process. Really just make it into like reports and dashboards if you were involved with security, kind of work around it. Um, but overall, really great resume. Just to retouch on both what Jared and I said, add a little bit more down here. You can combine your school projects. This looks great here. We, I think we both agreed to moving the education down and making sure that you put in the Salesforce skills that you have here as you go developing them over time, reorganizing the key skills section, and then also adding in your LinkedIn and your Trailblazer account. I like what you had just mentioned too about the, um, you know, we had talked about, spoke about it in the, in the last video, which was like adding those, those links and something that came to mind the other day when I was thinking about that, which was, it's, it's kind of interesting because LinkedIn and the Trailblazer profile, they've kind of become almost an extension of a business card, right? But a little bit more in, in the sense where I don't have to, you know, get one printed. I don't need a tangible copy for you to actually see what I do and what I like and what I post and the type of person that gives you almost a sneak peek of who I actually am behind, um, behind the resume and behind the paper. Uh, yeah. So I, I, you know, I definitely think that that's something that we should always try to establish mm -hmm. um, in a resume is to make sure that you know, you always have at least a window into something other than this page. So that way you can connect them to really understanding, you know, who you are, what you are, what you do, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that goes into the portfolio sections as well, which I'll probably talk about later on as we go through some of these resumes. Yeah. Yeah, and definitely just one more point into that that you just made me think about. But when you have that Trailblazer account and you talk to people about the learning that you love to do, because you'll hear that often in the Salesforce industry. We are all learners, right? We want to get on trailhead. We want to earn the next badge, what's out there. But by providing that direct link for an employer or recruiter to see, they can really speak highly of you if you are going up. I'm not saying that badges are absolutely required because they're not, but it does show another piece of personality into who you are. So great. So again, Jared, thank you for joining me on reviewing Holly's resume. And let's get to Amber.